Is cognitive dissonance the root of mental illness? Did Anthony Bourdain kill himself because of cognitive dissonance? Anthony Bourdain said, be humble, be grateful. And he espoused that message with his work. He demonstrated openness to new experiences and took you through those as he was having them. And he was amazing at it. And he was brave. And he was courageous. But if he was truly humble and courageous, I mean truly humble and grateful, he wouldn't have killed himself. So there's cognitive dissonance there, truly. He sat down with someone in one of his episodes and talked about how what we need to wait for is a few decades down the road a future where everyone is mixed up he said hopelessly mixed up to the point where everyone is cappuccino colored and then he said no one knows who to hate anymore because of that but the presupposition there that he reveals is that racism is a precursor to hatred but he hated himself which he revealed through his suicide. So that hatred wasn't the product of racism. And this is another example of cognitive dissonance. On top of that, in the future desired cappuccino mixed up society that he describes as being the solution to hatred there would be no parts unknown TV show there would be no career for Anthony Bourdain because he's going around to different places that have their own unique cultures and he's bringing that out He's showing you what these different distinct places are like. Once again, this is an issue of cognitive dissonance. If he's a cultural leader and he has the, these issues with cognitive dissonance, it goes to show that most people do. And in fact, I think we all do have cognitive dissonance at varying degrees and it's it's part of our human plight to have cognitive dissonance and it's necessary to acknowledge it and consider it and go in and understand yourself to remove those cognitive dissonance weeds as much as possible. Some weeds are bigger than others. Some are deeper than others. Some are further down deep in the subconscious mind than others. And we become 
accustomed to them being there, we, we become used to them. So we forget about them and, and we ignore them. But then they grow stronger. They get deeper roots. Then they're even harder to pull out. But it is a responsibility to weed your mental garden. When enough cognitive dissonance builds up, then mental illness sets in. That is my hypothesis here. And then when that's happening collectively on a widespread basis, you have kind of a normalization of cognitive dissonance, a normalization of mental illness, and then a society that is performing at less than its capable level. Then the society is compromised, and there's there's less hope, there's less opportunity, there's less optimism, and that brings down the mood so naturally the outcome of that is less um, mental health, less less clarity of thought, and less honesty. Because now people are trying to sweep all this, all these weeds under the rug, um, and c cover up the problems that they're having. And people become deceitful. And then we lose track of the problems themselves. So, that's why it's, it's such a major issue because there's that famous Einstein quote that we can't solve our problems at the same level in which they were created and that means we have to remove the weeds first and then plant, plant the flowers second but we're trying to plant new flowers and improve the situation in the garden that has all the weeds in it because we don't we don't want to deal with the weeding we don't want to deal with the mental weeding and we're we're suffering for that and those weeds are cognitive dissonance and it needs to be a collective goal and an individual goal to weed our gardens then we can plant flowers.